bless you. I'm assigned by my spiritual parents for me to be here today. Uh, do, don't be deceived. I'm assigned by them. When you see Mama and Daddy here, just know that they are assigned by God. Are you hearing that? Myself, I'm assigned by them. So God assigned them, they assigned me. Can you see how it works? It's a chain. And we must not break that chain. Tell someone and say, don't break the chain. Be connected. Tell that person with all of your heart, don't break the chain. They are the ones who are assigned by God. Myself, I'm assigned by them. So that's how it works. That's why we cannot fail. So the man of God said to me when he sent the message, he said, be an MC, take offering, uh, preach, minister, do everything. So today it's Emmanuel in three. So it means it's Emmanuel, Prophet Emmanuel, Prophetess Eunice, and Apostle three. Three. So the one you are seeing is Emmanuel, but there is Prophet Emmanuel coming very soon. Let, let's go straight to the Word of God. I want to talk about a simple topic that we all know. I believe we understand it. Love or love to God. Or you can say love of God. Write it down. We are going to read the book of 1 Corinthians. But I want you to Listen very attentively. It's not going to be the message that you know. Please, even if you don't like me, take this message. Hallelujah. Even if you don't like the preacher, but the message, I believe, is coming from God. It's going to help you. Let's read the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, from verse 1 to 3. And we'll jump to read verse 13. It says, if I could speak with all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I will only be a noisy gong or a changing symbol. Verse 2. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans, and possessed all knowledge. And if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but did not love others, I would be nothing. Let me read that verse again. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understand all of God's secret plans, and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but did not love others, I would be nothing. Verse 3. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't have love and love others, I would have gained nothing. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. For this holy weight is power, is life, is light to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Where we are reading, we are seeing some key words. The first thing that touched me when I was reading this script was, if I can have all knowledge, all prophecies, give people everything I have, I possess, but I don't have love. The Bible says I'm nothing. It means I don't exist. Nothing means nil, zero. You are not there. The Bible shows that faith is guarantee of results. So when you go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, where it's talking about faith, you hear that no one can please God without Without what? So meaning, if you want to be 
in the position of receiving from God, you must present your faith and God will give you your heart's desire. So here, the Bible says, if you want to know that you are alive, you must have love. Because love guarantees your existence. How do you know that, or how do we know that you are alive? It's when we see love in you. You cannot say, you are the child of God, you are going to heaven and everything is well, when the heart is full of hatred, full of malice, full of envy, jealousy, everything. Hallelujah. But when your heart is possessed, is covered, is dipped inside the love of God, the Bible shows that whatever you shall be doing, you'll be able to do it through love, because of love, and by love. And people will know that you are existing. Because it does not help for someone to know everything. The Bible shows that even if you have faith of moving mountains, hallelujah, you, you command the mountain, your mountain move, you'll find that you are doing powerful miracles that were never done before. But there's no love in you. The Bible says, ah, it doesn't profit you. What you are doing, you are just doing it in vain. People will see, clap hands for you, but God will be saying, what is happening? So it's a very painful thing if you can think about it. That we can tell ourselves that we are existing, we are alive, only to find that God is surprised of us. Ask someone and say, my friend, are you alive? And the person say what? I don't know. Ask the person again, do you have love in your heart? Hallelujah. Love, it shows that if you read down from verse 4, it talks about now the characteristics of it. Love is kind. Love is patience. Love is long-suffering. So it means you cannot just be agitated by a simple thing against your brother or your sister if love is there in your heart. So what you need is love. Tell three people. What you need is love. Three people. What you need is love. And there are many people who proclaim that they do have love, but you find that they say lie in it. Because the Bible shows that you cannot say you are able to love while there are no actions of love. There are no deeds of love. If you love we must see the deeds, the doings, the actions of your love inside you. Because love is like a spirit. You cannot see love, but you can see the produce or the results, the fruits of it. Hallelujah. So when you have love, like the book of John 3.16, it's a common verse that we all know. We sing it every day. The Bible said, for God loved that it touched him to give. And what he gave was the best that he had. Hallelujah. So when you love, you don't give what you hate. When you love, you don't give what you don't need. When you love, you don't give to throw, to clean out your house. You can't clean out your house and say you are loving. You are not. You are cleaning, you are giving people things that you don't need. It means you don't give by love and you don't give through love. You are giving because you want the new things to come to you. It's selfishness. Ask someone again, do you have love? And the, question, and the answer is what? Everyone here can say, I love. I love. I love. But if we deep, we dig Deep in your life, we'll see that there is no love at all. 
Love produces better results. Tell someone. If really we say we love, why do you have your neighbor who does not have food while you eat and other food that are left, you throw them into the bin if you say you have love? Why if you say you have love, you can pass someone on the road when it's rainy, you don't give that person a lift? Why if you don't have love, if you say you have love, you, you, you talk against others? Why if you say you have love, you are still backbiting? Ask someone again, do you have love? And the answer is what? Let's read the book of Matthew chapter 7. I'm talking about what? Love. After this service, I want every one of us to know and understand why you have to love. I want to be slow so that you can understand. Let's read chapter 7 from verse 2. It says, For you will be treated as you treat others. You are going to be what? Treated the way you treat others. The Bible shows here that the character we have and the way we relate to people, that's how it shall be related to us. So when you read verse 12 of the same chapter, it says, whatever you do to others shall be done exactly to you. So if you produce hatred, don't be surprised when you are hated. If you produce anger, don't be surprised when people are angry against you. But when you produce love, enjoy the fruits because people will be appointed by God to love you. Hallelujah. Let, let me just share this with you. When you are working in the Christian work and you try to live a holy life, always God will appoint people wherever you go. God will appoint people to come to you and change your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's as good also as if maybe you are full of lust, for example. Wherever you go, Satan is going to appoint people to come and provoke your lust so that you see an opportunity to gratify that lust in you. Do you understand? So when you produce love, God will appoint people who will bring love back to you. And you'll be surprised. Even in countries or places, provinces, where you are not known, someone will come and appreciate you if you have love. Hallelujah. So love connects you. Tell three people and say, my friend, if you want to be connected, have love in your heart. So there's something wonderful that God has done. And he has done it for all of us. God made sure that the heart is inside, is closed, is covered, so that we cannot see it. If it happens that one day God opens our bodies, we check inside, we see the heart, we realize that our Christianity is not there at all. Or those who say they are Christians, maybe they are 5% only out of the whole church. Hallelujah. Ask the person again, do you have love? If you have love, why are you criticizing other people? Ask the question, if you have love, why are you criticizing? Why? If you have love. Because the person you criticize, maybe you are seeing a challenge or a problem, you are the solution. Instead of you solving that problem, rectifying that mistake, you talk against, you criticize. So you don't have love. Ask the person again, do you have love? Yes. Hallelujah. So where we read now, the Bible says, when you judge others, the same measure that you are using to judge shall be used against you. You know, it's so nice when you, you hate, when you reject, when you, when you criticize, when you talk against, but it's so painful 
when all those things are done against you and they end up reaching your ear, that's when you realize that it was so painful also when you were doing it and the receivers were, rich, were being reached by those words. But unfortunately, sometimes we don't examine ourselves. Every night before we sleep, you must introspect yourself. Check yourself from inside. What did I do the whole day up to now? How many people did I hurt? How many people did I destroy? And how many people did I love? And how many people did I help? Then you realize that there are some issues that you have to address yourself. Let me tell you something. Many people, they pray that God give me love. And the Bible said, you must love. It doesn't say you must pray for love. You have to, it's like a command. You have to love. If you fast and pray for love, the love will never come. Because love is something that you have to decide to produce. It's something that you have to decide inside of you to say, I want to give this love. Even if I'm hated, but I'm going to give love. Hallelujah. So the moment you give love, you give, you because the Bible said we sow in tears. The first step when you start to love, people will question you, others will accuse you, others will think you are making yourself better, but you keep on sowing love because you know that you are not sowing for today. The Bible shows that the farmer, when he saw something, he saw in the soil and wait for the right time of harvest. You don't just sow love today and expect it to be loved tomorrow. You have to sow love and keep on sowing. If you read the Bible very well, it says, when you ask, you must ask and keep on asking. So when you knock, knock and keep on knocking. When you pray, pray continuously. So when you so in love, you must so conti perpetually, continuously, until the fruit comes. You don't so love today and want to reap tomorrow. No, it's a wrong mentality. The right, the right mentality is you so love in patience. And when you carry on, God will be appointing people that will love you one day and will be surprised that you are appreciated. Hallelujah. People who are called celebrities, most of them, they were not celebrated before because the word celebrity is coming from the word celebration. It means maybe one who was not a celebrity was admiring, was aspiring, was interested in being one one day. So what he started to do is let me celebrate those who have been celebrated. Let me also try to find out how they have achieved their goals. You check their steps. From there, you start to say, okay, let me ask them how they have reached where they are. At the end of the day, the very same person who is following in their footsteps is the one one day who is celebrated. So if you want to be celebrated, produce love. Produce love. Tell someone and say, produce love and will be celebrated. Hallelujah. Do you know that when we preach here, we preach because of love? Because if you do not have love and you want to minister to someone, God will never do anything. We have to minister with our whole hearts. Like today when we're worshiping, I wanted to worship with all of my voice, with love, until my voice is finished. I didn't even want to care that I have to preach. I wanted to sing with all of my heart, with love, forgetting what will happen next. And God is the one who will produce that love to me. And when that love is being produced, I know that it's going to work for me in Jesus' name. If you want to be loved, you must first love. Let me give an example by the book of Luke 6. 38. The Bible says, give and it shall be given back. So here it says you are the one who must initiate. I had another preacher one day lying to people and say, don't give, wait for God to give you first to bless you first before you can give. I said, this is lie. The Bible said you must start 
Why? Because you must show faith. So faith is a substance of things that are not seen. But the evidence is there. You know you can't see them, but there's evidence in it. It's like love. Love, you can't see it, but you can see the produce of love. Hallelujah. So if you want to be loved, you must start first. Tell three people and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. How do you tell three people when you are sitting? Three. I love you. But don't, don't use this as an advantage to propose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, tell three people, I love you. And I'm watching you. Say, I love you. I love you. Because someone can say, thank God, prophet has given me time. It's a long time I wanted to tell her. Don't do that. We are still in the church. Tell three people again, I love you. I love you. I love you. Love covers multitude of sins. If you have love and you love someone and you produce love, you have the fruit of love, you will never laugh at anyone's mistake. The moment you laugh at someone, you show us that you don't have love. Because the mistake you see, like I said, you are the one to correct. If you check on the street, in our streets these days, there are many people who are staying there, sleeping there, no clothes, no food, no shelter. And all we get is laugh, laugh, laugh. People are laughing at them. Others, they say, it's because of what they smoke. Others, they say, it's because they were disobedient to their parents. But no one will say, this is the mistake that I can correct. None of us. One day, Jesus was giving a parable of a man who came from Jerusalem from prayer. He was going to Samaria. The Bible says this man met criminals who destroyed his life and they left him half dead. When he was there half dead, there came a priest from church. He looked at that man who is injured, bleeding in pain, and passed him. The Bible says there came a Levite. Remember, a Levite was also the leader of the church. The Bible shows that he also came on the same road. The moment he saw the man who was lying there in the pool of blood, he also passed without any help. But there came a sinner, a Samaritan, who was going home. He looked at the man and said, I cannot pass this person. This is a human being. This is the creation of God. The Bible said he took that person onto his donkey and take him to hospital. When he reached the hospital, he said, you people of hospital, make sure that this person is healed. And he paid the fare. And he said to them, when I come back, I'm going to finish the balance that is there in your bill. Hallelujah. And now the, Jesus was asking this question and saying, now, who is the neighbor of this person? Can we say the neighbor is a Levite because he's a pastor? Can we say the, the, the neighbor is a priest because he's a bishop? No. The neighbor is the one who can bring help to the needy. Hallelujah. So the moment you see need somewhere, be the neighbor. Be the solution. Be the solution. Show love there. And God will love you back. Sometimes when we want to give, we want to show love, we want to give to people that we know they will give us back tomorrow. That's not love. Love says give and forget. It's like you are sowing a seed. When you sow a seed in the ground, you sow it and you close it, you forget about it. By the appointed time of the living God, is the one who will make that seed to produce results and one day you are going to eat from that tree. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So now, when you want to show love, don't expect to be loved back. At the same time, God can appoint somewhere, someone somewhere to love you. Don't show love here and expect to be loved there. No. If you want to be loved, show the love here and pass. God will appoint someone somewhere to love you back. When you already forgotten, that's when you will see the results of what you did in the past. The Bible said, we are the results of what we said yesterday. So the Bible said now, we are what we think 
And what you think is what you are. When you think nothing, it means you are nothing. When you think love, you are love. When you think solution, you are the solution. When you think richness, you are rich. When you think poverty, you are poor. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You must think love. Ask somebody and say, what are you thinking? Because what you are thinking is what you are. We are living the consequences of our words we spoke yesterday. So when you see me here, is something that I spoke yesterday. The way you are, that's what you spoke. So that's why we have to be careful of what you say with our mouth. Be careful of your lips. Tell somebody, say, my friend, don't say anything anyway. Because there is authority and power in your tongue. If you say love, love will come. Tell someone, if you say love, love must come. And that love is Jesus. For God is love. John 10, 30, the Bible says, it was Jesus. He said, I and Father are one. This was the answer of many years. He said, me and the Father are one. And people were asking themselves, how can Jesus forgive sins and forgive sinners? One day, when he was in a very big crowd, the Bible shows that in the house where he was, there were many visitors. So when he was still talking, sharing the word of God, there were three people who were carrying someone crippled. So they wanted to bring this person to Jesus. And they could see that they, they, it's full. The door is closed. The windows are locked. The Bible shows that they went to the roof and opened the roof and lowered the person to where Jesus was. You know why? Because they knew that if they lowered this man to any visitor who was in the house, he can be rejected and pushed. So they made sure that they lowered the man who is crippled straight to where Jesus was. Hallelujah. And the moment Jesus saw the man crippled, he never wasted time. He stopped with his speech and looked at their faith and said, because of your faith, I forgive this one's sins. And everyone was grumbling in the house. The very same visitors who were with Jesus in the house, they were grumbling. Why is he forgiving people's sins? They didn't know, they didn't know the heart of Jesus. That Jesus' heart is full of love. And Jesus is love. And Jesus wanted to give love to this man. So themselves, they were happy that this man is crippled. He cannot do anything. He cannot help himself. So Jesus was accused because of love he showed to the crippled man. The Bible said after he forgave his sins, the man stood up and rolled his mat and went home. Everyone was shocked and surprised. And this brought an uproar in everywhere where Jesus was to say, how can he forgive sins? This man make himself better. In fact, they said he made himself God. They did not have knowledge that Jesus and God are one. Tell somebody and say, my Jesus and my God, they are one. Hallelujah. You know, it's so nice when you know that you, when you have Jesus, you have love. Hallelujah. When people are talking against you, let me give you the solution. Do not answer. Let God speak for you. Show love. When they talk against, show love. When they criticize, show love. When they persecute, show love. When Jesus was hanging on the cross of Calvary, on the mountain of Skull, everyone was waiting to see if Jesus could be able to help himself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And others were criticizing him, including the criminal who was hanging there next to Jesus. He said, really, if you are the son of God, help yourself and help me too. Now, the moment they saw the sun getting dim and the whole area was dark, and there was a very big veil that separated the temple from the other side to the other side of holiness, being torn 
from top to bottom. The Bible shows that also the tombs, the graves, were best open. People were rising that day. It was so powerful that everyone could see that truly this is the man of love. Everyone was convinced that really this is the son of the living God. Because there are many people who have been killed, who have been put on the cross, but there's nothing that has ever happened. The sun became dark. The whole area was darkness. Everyone was convinced this is the man of love. Hallelujah. So whenever you show love, two or three might not see that you are loving, but 10 million can see that you are the man, the woman of love. Hallelujah. When you show love, do not even count it. Write it down. Don't count it when you show love. Because when you count, it means you are giving God time. Lord, I'm loving. I need to be loved. Lord, I'm loving. I need to... Don't count. Keep on showing love. Keep on loving. And when you are doing that, God is preparing something good best and better for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let, let's go back to that 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the very same chapter, verse 13. I want us to look at something there. Thank God I have my Bible today. Normally I use iPad, but today I'm, I'm, I'm reading my Bible. Verse 13, the last Verse of chapter 13, 1 Corinthians. Three things will last forever. Are you seeing that verse? Three things will last forever. Number one, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this is, can you read in your Bible? 13, read it. One, two, three, read I'm not hearing what you are reading. It's like you are singing. Read again. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this is? It means if you have faith and you have hope, you are not complete. You still need what? Love. And the greatest is? So, don't lay him to say, because I have faith, I'm fine. You are not. You need love first. The second one is faith now. The third one is hope. So, because hope does not disappoint. So, when you have love, check if you have faith and check if there is hope. Because, I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said these three, they work together. These three, they work, but the greatest of these three is love. So you cannot have love and don't have faith and think you are complete. No, you are not. And you cannot have faith and lack hope. Still, you are not complete. The completion of your life and Christianity is when you have three of them and one must supersede these two which is love. So when you pray, you must pray with love. When you give, love. When you preach, love. Hallelujah. When you prophesy, love. I wonder if Jesus was here today and start to open our hearts. I don't know what will happen to us. You find that others will just say, Lord, I'm just going to the mall, open my heart when I come back. Because we're going to see terrible things. Love. love. Tell people and say, three people, love, 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 love. Three. Love, love. I, I don't even know how I must tell you this. Tell three people and say, my friend, may you please love me. Three people. Please love me. If your husband is here or your wife, go to him or her and say, sorry ma'am, seriously, can you please love me? Go to that person. 
Go, don't go to your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Go to your husband or your wife and say, sorry, can you love me from today? And I want to see the results. I want to see the fruits. Because this thing of love, love, sometimes we just talk, but it's not there inside the heart. Are, are you doing it? You came alone, all of you. Are you all single here? Where's your wife? Where's your husband? Go to that person. Are you going? Don't go to the person that you wish can marry you. No, 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 no. Go to your husband or your wife and say, can you please love me? Hallelujah. Okay. It's, it's, it's difficult. Okay, go and do it at home in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because I can see uh, others, they have three husbands. Others, they have four wives. So you are, you are scared now. If you go to this one, what will that one say? If you go, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, you will do it at home in secret. Let, I want to show you three types of love. Only three. Three types of love. Number one is agape. God's selfless love. We read it and we find it in the book of John. The one I spoke about. So if you read John 1.12, the Bible says, Anyone and those who have received him, he has given them right, power, authority to become his. Meaning, these are the ones that have seen the love of God. So John 3.16, it says, He loved and he gave. So those he gave, they took. So there are two things here. God gave because of love. There is someone who must take this love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if he gave and no one is taking, it can happen like in Jerusalem, in Israel, where the Bible said Jesus came to his own and his own disowned him. They, they, they rejected him. They didn't want him. That's why now the salvation has to be spread the, throughout the whole world to those who can take this love. Hallelujah. So the moment he gives, be the first one to do what? To do what? To take. He gave, but he needs someone who can take. Read that, that verse. John 1, 12. Maybe we know it. John 1, 12. Let me read for you. 1, John 1. John chapter 1, verse 12. Listen to this one. It's NLT. It says, But to all who believed in him, and accepted him, received him, took this love. There are those who took the love. And those are the ones that he called them his own. Hallelujah. Do you want to be called his own today? Take this love. Say, I take it. And give that love to others. Don't just take it, you fill yourself with it. Because one day it can explode. Give it to others. You know, I remember one day when we had the workshop of pastors here, they did said, people admire to, to have gifts of the Holy Spirit. Others, they admire to be prophets or apostles or whatever. But he said to us, the best gift that you can ever have is evangelical gift the evangelical gift he meant he meant that you can go out to people and share the word not preach not after preaching you get offering you share the love that we have been received from almighty god to others hallelujah so he said the best gift we can ever have is evangelical work where you reach maybe two people on the street. Sorry, say, sorry, sorry, ma'am. Do you know Jesus? No. Jesus is one, two, three. Do you know Jesus, my brother? No. This is Jesus. He said, that is the best gift we can have. And he said, every pastor of charities must have that gift. Hallelujah. 
Even you as a member have that gift in Jesus' name. Tell three people, love me and I will love you. Three, love me and I will love you. Love me and I will love you. Yes, that's the first love I wanted to talk about, agape. Selfless love. God's selfless love is love without selfishness. So, it's love that produces, that gives, but does not expect to be given back. Hallelujah. Number second one is philia. We can read it from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 18. Let's go there and read. 1 Samuel 18. Let's go there. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. It says, After David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond between them, for Jonathan loved David. From that day on, Saul kept David with him and would not let him return home. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Are you seeing that? David was loved by Jonathan, the son of King Saul. Remember, King Saul was so much intimidated by the boy David. So he hated him with passion. So the Bible said one day when they were sitting there, he wanted to pin him against the wall. So David just did like this, and the arrow went to the wall. And from that moment, Saul was very much afraid of David. And there was this young man, the son of Saul, Jonathan his name, he was so much interested in this boy. And he could see the hatred that his father had towards David. So he was worried to say, but why can David come to me? Why is he with my father? The Bible said, now, after Saul finished his conversation with David, when he went out, there came Jonathan and said, my friend, from now on, I will love you like I love myself. The Bible said, because David was so suffering, he, Jonathan gave him his coat to wear. Maybe it was winter. So their souls were so made, were so clean to each other that no one could separate these people. There was a time when Saul wanted to trap David and he decided to give him Saul decided to give David his firstborn daughter. Not because he wanted David to be his son-in-law, but he wanted to tempt him. Hallelujah. So one day, when David went away, Saul took that lady to another man. When David came back, he realized that, ha, he's no longer having a wife. His wife was given to someone else, but there was Michael. The Bible shows that she started to love David. She was the younger one, youngest to the one that was given to someone else. So when she started to love David, and Saul still he had that, that thing in his mind to say, I want to trap this young man. I'll allow him to marry Michael, my daughter, so that I can catch him one day. Hallelujah. Little did Saul know that Michael loved David with all of her heart. So when she was getting married to David, Saul was no longer there. The spirit of Saul was dead. Hallelujah. You know, when you give people love, you are destroying the spirit of Saul. Tell three people and say, my friend, when you give love, there is a wrong spirit that you are canceling. Cancel that spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There are many, there are many things in the spiritual realm that is happening when we live like this. Like when I'm preaching here, there are many things happening here. We can't see them. And for us to see them is when we have love. There are many people who want to be prophets, as they always say, because they want to see other people's problems. And they, they too, themselves too, they have problems that they cannot solve. But love says, I will give and don't care about myself. That's love. Selfless love. Hallelujah. So the one I'm talking about here is brotherly love. 
where you love unconditionally and you don't need anything. It's more or less the same as God's love, agape love. Hallelujah. And there's this third one, which I can call it the last one. It's called eros or erotic love. Love full of lust. Love that wants to satisfy its own. It does not care how you feel. As long as I'm fine, I'm okay. I don't care if you are laughing or not. That, that's eros, erotic love. Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 13. Let's read it. Second Samuel. Verse 1. Now David's son, Absalom, had a beautiful sister named Tamar. And Amon, Amnon, I mean to say, her half-brother fell disparately in love with her. People of God, listen very carefully here. The Bible shows that David was having three children here. Number one, Absalom, Amnon, and Tamar. These are the children of David. But Amnon now loved his sister. I don't know if you are seeing what I'm seeing. So when he started to love his sister, he was so full of lust that I will one day get my sister, but I won't even marry her. Lust, eros, erotic love. Love full of sin. The book of John is talking about on this earth, there are three things. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and proud look. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, let me read Kering Wong. Amnon became so obsessed with Tamar that he became ill. She was a virgin, and Amnon thought he could never have her. Look at verse 3. But Amnon had a very crafty friend, his cousin, Jonadab. Ask someone to say, how many friends do you have? Some other friends are there brought by Satan for you to sin against God and you fail to love. The Bible shows that this man full of sin, the son of David, Amnon, had a crafty friend. Very, very bad friend he had. His name is Jonadab. Jonadab said, my friend, what's wrong is like your soul is troubled. He said, yes, it is, but it's because of the love I have towards my sister. And he said to him, my friend, don't worry. You know what you must do? Pretend as if you are sick and go to your bedroom. So we'll make a plan that this sister comes to your bedroom and you do whatever you want with it. Hallelujah. This, this is a shameful love. Tell somebody and say, I don't want this erotic love. Because this is the love that you don't even think about the repercussions. You only think about to gratify the lust you feel. Your feeling comes first, which is wrong. Because the Bible shows that Christianity is when you feel first for others before you can feel for yourself. If you want to eat, you also can think for someone who is hungry. So this kind of love... I don't know why we call it love. Let's call it lust. Maybe it can make sense. Hallelujah. It only wants to satisfy its need and don't care about the one who will cry afterwards. So this man, Amnon, followed the instruction of his crafty friend, Jonada. So this issue ended up reaching the ears of their father, David. David knew that Amnon is sick, but he did not know that Amnon is not sick, he's pretending. Tell three people and say, don't pretend. If you love, you must make sure that you love. Don't just say you love, you find that you are pretending. Don't love with your lips, tell someone. Don't love with your lips. There are people who love with eyes. There are those who love with hands. After touching, that's when now they laugh. After seeing, they laugh. After eating, they laugh. 
Hallelujah. So, John Adab gave his friend Amnon a wrong advice. My friend, pretend. Let me read it. Maybe you'll think I'm just getting it from my mind. So, Amnon told him, I'm in love with Tamar, my brother Solomon. There's five. Well, John Adab said, I'll tell you what to do. Go back to bed and pretend you are sick. Pretend you are what? Sick. Pretend. How many pretenders do we have here? Pretenders. How many of those who laugh? Let me see your hands. Those who laugh, only few. So you are all pretenders. Thank God you are going to change in Jesus' name. Maybe you need deliverance for you to be delivered from that spirit of pretending. How many pretenders? Let me see pretenders. Okay, let me see those who can laugh. No one. So, so only few. Stand up. If you can laugh, let me see you. Let me see if you can laugh. Don't stand if you don't understand. Th thank you. Thank you. So those, th those who are sitting cannot laugh. Or maybe they don't understand my English. Can you laugh? Yes or no? Can you pretend sometimes? Yes. Clap hands for the one who said yes. Thank you. You are being honest. Sit down. My question is, can you love? Yes. Not all of you must say yes. Can you love? Yes. Thank you. Not all of you must say yes. Sometimes can you pretend? Yes. yes that's truth. Sometimes, let me say, in most of times, we pretend. You know why we pretend? Because we want to cover our own mistakes. We want to be accepted. That's why you pretend. But from now on, stop pretending. The Bible said your yes must be yes, and your no must be no. Don't say yes when you mean no. And don't say no when you mean yes. When you say yes, is yes, done. For the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Jesus say yes, he cannot come back and say no. Hallelujah. Do you know the verse that says, the gifts of God are without repentance? If God calls you to be a bishop, for example, God cannot change tomorrow and say you are no longer a bishop, now you are an evangelist. His gifts are without repentance. He does not change. It's God yesterday, today and forever. When he say yes, he does not change. You know, if you, you can check what happened to Jesus when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible shows that he was sweating and his sweat was so thick like blood. Hallelujah. And, you know, the turmoil, the, the heat he was feeling of his death, he was breathing, smelling his blood. He ended up praying and saying, Lord, this cup is so heavy for me. Let it pass. Let, give this cup to someone else. And immediately, love enters his heart and said, I cannot forget the reason why I'm here. I'm here because of love, and I want to die for sinners because I love them. He said, Lord, bring that cup. I can drink it. I'm ready for it. So, your love is tested when you have challenges. Your love is tested when you have problems. Your love is tested when you are broke. You don't have a pen in your pocket. Someone will come and say, my friend, please help me. And you have the last penny. So if you check in the scriptures, the Bible shows that one day, prophet Elijah, who was fed by ravens, and he was only getting water from the brook. One day the brook dried up, and God stopped the bed from giving him food. He said, now, go to Sidon in Zarabath. You are going to meet a widower who is going to take care of you. I have appointed her to give you food. The Bible said when he reached at the gates of Sidon, he found a woman who was gathering sticks to make fire. And he asked her a simple thing. Woman, give me water to drink. 
So the Bible shows that she ran, wanted to fetch water for the man of God. The man of God says, stop, stop, stop. In fact, I'm tasting your love here. I'm no longer thirsty. I'm hungry. I want to be honest. I don't want to pretend. In fact, what brought me to you is hunger. Can you prepare food for me to eat? And the Bible says, the woman started to grumble and complain. Sorry, sir. I don't know you. The second challenge is, the food that I have is so small. In fact, it's not even food yet. It's a flower that I want to prepare for me and my son. We eat, from there we die. So this woman was ready to die after eating. She wanted to die with the stomach full. And the man of God said, it's not over yet. Go and prepare and give it to me first. So it was like the man of God is not caring because he is only concerned about his stomach. What about the stomach of the child and the stomach of the poor widow? So she was not understanding that God wanted to bring love to her life. So the Bible said she, though she was complaining, but she went and prepared food, brought it to the man of God. When the man of God was eating, it's like I'm seeing him. He's just eating and don't even look at the small boy who is supposed to eat first. After he filled his stomach, God spoke with the man of God. Listen to this. If you are here and you understand the reason you are here, let me speak as the son of Apostle, my father, that after this service, God will give you what you need in Jesus' name. I am standing on this altar of Charis Missionary Church where I know Mama is here, Daddy is here. Whatever you need, I speak as the prophet of the Most High God. Receive your heart's desire in Jesus' name. And it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus.